Hi, today we're going to cover packaging and types of packaging that you can apply to your product. Uh, branding packaging can add huge value to the same item. That cotton t-shirt in one retailer and the same cotton material t-shirt sold in another retailer, one may be $10, the other may be $200, and the only difference really is the branding, the packaging, the finish, the feel, the design. The materials, the cost, the labor are pretty much the same, not huge amounts of difference. Uh, High-end brands used to have very special materials that were different to the normal products, but now everyone pretty much uses similar factories, similar sources. There's not a huge difference in quality. What there is a big difference is, is in the finish, the design, and the packaging. So choosing the right type of packaging for your good one it's to protect the item during shipment but two it's to make the three dollar item the five dollar item in the box from the factory feel like a 50 60 80 100 dollar item apple for example when you open the iphone that box is designed to lift over a three second period to give you the optimal experience as you're opening the box. Then as you open it, what you see, the process you go through is to get you to familiar with the phone. Apple uses packaging very, very, very carefully with its product. I'm not saying that you have to find a factory that will, will uh, make you a box which opens in exactly three seconds, but it just shows you that the whole experience of your product starts from the minute it arrives in the customer's hands their value perception of how good your item is. One, it's the images on your listing. Two, it's when the goods actually arrive, how it's packaged. If it's just in a cheap, shitty plastic bag, the customer's gonna feel like they got ripped off a bit. It's not worth as much as if it was in a nice, say, paper carton with a textured finish, for example. So we're just gonna run through some of the different types of packaging material available just to give you some examples, and it's endless. Uh, I would strongly recommend you ask the factory that you're working with to show you examples and pictures of products, uh, the products they're making and how other customers have packaged it to give you more of a feel for how you can package the item too. Uh, there'll be some examples here, and I recommend you do a little Google search for your type of product, see what the competitors are doing, how they package it, and pick and choose what you think is the best value for the least cost in terms of creating a higher value perception for the customer but keeping the manufacturing cost down so here we have the standard uh, this is called a pp or poly bag uh, and when you manufacture goods in bulk in china pretty much all of them will end up in one of these prior uh, if you haven't specified a particular packaging if you're just ordering in bulk You'll go into a poly bag um, and you could, in theory, ship like this to Amazon or other e-commerce sites. But I would recommend t having taking a little bit of effort and just adding something to the packaging to make it nicer and seem more valuable to the customer. So this is the very, very basic. Your product would slip inside. Uh, one, 50, 20, 100 of these would then go into a carton and, and that's it. So what you could do is to print on that type of plastic bag to create an effect. And here they've used a white backing and then clear front with a print on it. Um, so this is a printed uh, plastic bag. You could use a silver foil bag, which on its own can look really, really good. A lot of electronics are packed in a silver foil bag with a clear window, uh, maybe printed at the top or a backing card at the top and it looks great uh, let me give you an example so here you have a printed silver foil bag uh, if it's a very basic item it could be a silicon ring or a iphone cable slips into the bag i mean this looks this looks great it's super cheap you're talking cents per bag um, yet it looks quite premium to the customer uh, in terms of getting the packaging design done once you have the shape of the actual packaging and the size there's many uh, freelance websites you can find good packaging designers to do you a design for 50, 100 bucks maximum. Here you have a clear plastic bag with what's called a header card. Um, easy way to increase the perceived value of the product. 
very simple again costs cents to make per per packaging you could include an insert card or a, a slide that into the back of the clear plastic bag one to give the bag some structure and shape uh, two to add your branding and maybe even a coupon code uh, a very simple way to and uh, to pack the goods I would recommend using an insect card inside the plastic bag or a foil bag uh, for your first order one to save time it's it's cheap it's simple it's quick um, you're not you're not maybe you're not sure that this is a is a really good item you're just testing two three hundred pieces for your order so it's just a simple way to brand the goods um, make it look a little bit more premium than just having a plastic bag uh, and it's a quick and easy way to do that and an insert card is costing, gonna cost you cents a time as well uh, another way of packing is something called a blister pack so here you have a plastic area that holds the goods and it could be a much bigger plastic area depends on the particular product and a backing card that surrounds it that's printed on the front and the back uh, again this would probably be if you're having a slightly larger order quantity say two or three thousand products because the, mo the majority of the cost of any packaging is in the setup so the cost difference between ordering a thousand and two thousand maybe a hundred dollars uh, but the first thousand may cost you a thousand dollars and each subsequent additional thousand may cost you only a hundred dollars more because the majority of the cost is in the machine cost is in the tooling setup for this particular shape to fit your product um, is in the labor time and uh, they're having to stop production of other products and use your time on the machine that's all factored into the cost so you may have to order two or three thousand insert cards backing cards uh, plastic bags on your first order keep the, some at the factory use some for your first order and it's because the price difference between three thousand and three hundred maybe cents like it may cost you fifty dollars more to have three thousand instead of three hundred so always worth asking the factory for a larger quantity of packaging as well because the incremental cost may be tiny and you can use it for follow-up orders so if you know an item's selling well maybe you can order ten thousand of the packaging each time and just keep it keep some at the factory until you run low and then reorder again because the cost of ordering ten thousand sets of packaging might be the same as ordering 2500 there may be a very very small difference because of the setup costs so here's another form of backing card solid cardboard card that's been printed on a plastic area that's stuck onto the top and then sealed by machine and your product goes inside there the thing to watch out for with this type of uh, packaging and material is uh, the scratching here you've got the crinkling on the corners so this hasn't been very well made at all um, sometimes there's bubbles or fades in the plastic material as well it's just stuff to watch out for uh, another form of packaging you can use is to simply use a, a cardboard carton no printing at all white on the outside no coating on the inside the product just goes inside uh, the, the box would be shaped to fit your particular item um, and then just keeps it safe in transport gives it a little bit more of a premium feel because it is packed in a box instead of just a plastic bag I would recommend keeping the product in the plastic bag and then into the box itself just an added layer of protection against scratches so this one is a double-sided white paper box and so what you would get is something like this to give to your designer and then they would apply the artwork if you wanted the box to be printed for example and you can see the huge difference it makes between a plain white box and a printed white box yet the cost of these two boxes the, the difference may be one or two cents because of the printing but the the nice design the nice style has added a huge amount of perceived value to the same box and product a simple carton like this may cost you 10 to 20 or 30 cents depending on the size of your item how many you've ordered the thickness of the paper something like 400 grams per square meters is usually okay plus or minus a little so that's somewhere to, to, to start off you can ask for samples from the factory so you can see the paper quality and I would recommend doing that but definitely definitely add a print and 
of all the types of packaging uh, available, I would say that the one that adds the most value in terms of look for the for a customer for most products is a simple white paper carton that's printed like this because you're paying 30 cents for a printed box yet it's taking a product that looks like it's worth five dollars up to look like it's worth twenty dollars just because it's in a printed nice clean box and use a nice quality of paper and make sure the inside of the box is not gray but white also because sometimes the factories use a recycled paper which is white on the outside gray on the inside so when the customer opens the box it's it's gray it's not as nice as if it was double layered in white and there's not a huge cost difference at all between those another option is to have a, a, a hard paper gift box so this is cardboard wrapped in paper here it's foil stamped with silver. This can be printed on instead as well. There's a huge cost difference between a simple paper carton, which is this style, uh, and this hard rigid box. Uh, these can be machine made. These boxes can be machine made, machine folded, machine glued. The machine just spits out 10,000 in an hour, simple. Whereas these have to be usually uh, they're hand wrapped. So the paper's uh, glue is applied to the paper. The worker will fold over the edges of the paper and glue it all in together. So it's a much more manual process, slower, therefore more expensive because one, the factory have to cover the labor costs, but two, because it's manually made, maybe 10 or 20% are defective. And so they have to account for that cost as well. Whereas the machine one is much more accurate, very, very small percentage of defects. What you need to watch out for of all packaging and print in China is if you say blue, it can be anywhere between light blue and very dark blue. Even if you've given them an actual color to follow, most printing factories and factories are, have a very wide tolerance for the color. They're not very good at matching colors. Uh, the industry standard is to see you something called Pantone. So you'd buy a Pantone book and in that Pantone book, it has numbers for different types of shades of blue. You would specify the Pantone color to go with the particular product that you uh, packaging in the print. And the factory also have the same Pantone book and they're supposed to match that. In theory, the reality is there may be quite a wide variation between uh, prints. So that's why it might be a good idea to, to print 10,000 at a time, make sure that they are when when you've when you've when you're getting the print to to do a they can do an example print for you and you can sign that off as the color that they're supposed to match to as well so they'll give you a sheet to sign off on uh here we have another form of blister uh pvc box packing and so this can be this this plastic material can be pet uh can be pp can be pvc um there's different prices and different effects that you can do on those different materials. Here they've printed onto the clear box as well. They've got a cardboard bottom. Really nice effect for certain products uh, to, to combine the two this way. This is a hard plastic box that they've used here instead. Very expensive. Why? Because you have to make the tooling to fit the exact product which can range from several thousand dollars to tens of thousand dollars depending on the specifications i mean they've even got the logo etched into the top as well so this is a very very expensive packaging and then even though they've paid the ten twenty thousand dollars up front to custom make this packaging for this particular item each one's going to cost them a couple of bucks because it's thick plastic material they've got several layers to this uh, packaging uh, there's a lot of labor involved, printing involved, stages involved. There's some backing material I can see here to hold the product in place. There's cardboard to hold the product in place. Then there's printing around the, the bottom part of the plastic. This is expensive. So you have, on one hand, you have this box, which is 30 cents, printed, looks nice. And on another, you can have a box like this, which could end up costing you two, three dollars or more, depending on the factory, the quality, the finish, as well as this one having an upfront cost of maybe a couple of hundred dollars to set up the machine and this type of box having an upfront cost of twenty thousand dollars to set up the machine until you're doing very very big volumes like Jabra I would recommend sticking to simple packaging that looks nice so simple printed carton uh, this is another type of paper carton 
uh, printed on with the image. Uh, not expensive at all to make this kind of a box. You're talking 20 to 50 cents depending on the size and and the exact finishes you use. Uh, and it's simply a multicolored, looks like a four color print that they've done. And you can choose to have a matte finish on the box, a glossy finish on the box. I would recommend matte. Gloss tends to cheapen the effect of the product and get scratched, whereas a matte finish gives it a premium look and hand feel as well. Uh, inside the box itself, you can hold the product. The product could be packed in a plastic bag loosely. Here they uh, have a foam insert that's been cut specifically to the shape of the product. Again, there's a tooling and a setup cost involved with that. Individually, these foam might be a few cents a time, but you may have to order two to 5,000 because it's a custom size made just for your particular product. So there's a foam insert. Another type is a blister insert. So this would sit inside and the product would hold inside here. And then that would go inside the gift box. Again, you would have to order three to 5,000 units of this most likely uh, at a price somewhere between 15 to 30 cents depending on the size and there'll be a setup cost because it's custom to your particular product and i think the foam looks much more premium than the plastic the plastic now you can have in multiple colors there's effects you can do to the finish of the plastic you can have a textured layer on the top so really the factory can do almost anything you want it to keep it simple to start with and then investigate what you can do to improve the quality of the packaging as you go. Here you have a simple uh, hand wrapped paper gift box uh, with a draw style. Relatively expensive because this material, this, this box most likely would be hand wrapped versus the machine made plastic carton, uh, paper carton. But uh, look, looks great, uh, really good finish and really depends on your particular product as to what you think would match it. If you're selling a cheap uh, cheap uh, utility item, uh, let's say a, a hammer, maybe simply using a solid card, backing card, and have the, the product attached to it with a plastic tie is suitable. If you're selling something more premium for $60, $70, maybe the customer is expecting it to arrive in nice packaging. And that's something you need to consider. Maybe, maybe it's worth investing the 2 or $3 per pack for your item. So here you have a paper tube. Really nice as well. Uh, usually pretty expensive to do because it's hard to manufacture, hard to manage the quality. If you're hand wrapping the paper around, uh, paper comes as a square, as a rectangle sheet. And so as you're wrapping it around, around the edges here, you can have a lot of defects as you try to get the paper inside and around, uh, which makes it slow to manufacture. There's a high level of defects. You've got to really watch the quality of the this type of packaging. You can have a tin. So you have a tin with a plastic lid in this case. Again, because it's a custom size, uh, custom type of packaging, there's a, a large upfront fee for the tooling. Here you've got a paper hand-wrapped gift box with a gold foil finish and a hot stamped gold logo onto the top as well. You can see here though, that it's not 100% smooth if it's been wrapped around the edge of the box. And so this bottom one looks better. This one looks a bit bumpy. And really they have to, when they're wrapping it around, they have to get that edge exact. So it's a couple of millimeters uniform all the way around. These are handmade. So that makes it slow. That makes it expensive. Uh, that means there's a lot more defects. When you're checking the quality before shipping out the goods, you need to watch out. Uh, this kind of box is difficult, very difficult to get right and get well which is why it's much more expensive than a typical paper carton. There's factories, packaging factories can do all kinds of effects. So here you have a wooden box with leather around it as well. Uh, tin, tin style box, which can be printed on too. A laser etched wooden box to hold the goods. Uh, very high end premium wooden box here. So as you can see, right from the simple plastic bag, all the way through 
there's a wide variety of finishes and effects that can be done, materials that can be used. My recommendation would be to keep it simple to start with. Use just an insert card in a plastic bag or a printed paper carton uh, with, the, with the product inside a plastic bag, inside the paper carton with maybe an insert card. And that's probably the best and simplest way to get started. And it probably has the most bang for your buck. So whereas a wooden box may cost you five to ten dollars or a paper paper tube may cost you three to five dollars this type of box should end up costing you less than 50 cents yet it still makes the uh, five dollar or ten dollar product feel much more premium uh increases the perceived value of the product for your customer and will make your listing look much more professional and better if you can show the box and the product together it just increases the authority and the trust of your particular product and will make it stand out versus other similar products.